Fun. Hey, welcome back. My name is John. This is the Vinyl Village Garage. And what you see behind me here, 1969 Firebird Convertible. Looking really nice. Let me show you these doors. Got these brand new AMD doors. Fit phenomenally. Even those are OER recorders. I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, as you can see, it's still here in the garage. Last garage, I was kind of hoping to ship this thing out and have a media blast. It had a little mishap. The fellow I've been using for over 20 years um, sold the business. Yeah, good for him, right? Bad for us. I got to find someone else to help me with my media blasting needs. I've been shopping around, doing a little bit of research, but um, I haven't found anybody that can help me out because I, I got to haul this thing outside in the really crappy weather. So I don't want to be taking it across country driving for several hours. I want to drop it off someplace, have it taken care of, and then pick it up because I can't do it out here in the driveway. That dust is blasting in the neighborhood. Well, my neighbors, they can only tolerate so much. I kind of push the issue sometimes, and I, I like to fight nice with them and stay in good. That's some really great neighbors, and I want to keep it that way. So. Anyway, with that being said, we're going to keep working on getting little projects done here on the Mockingbird. And if you run out of things to do until you get the thing media blast, then go back to work on the back in Blackbird, my high school car, under the cover, the workbench, 5,000, holding all my stuff. I uh, might work on that just a little bit. In the meantime, do some work. Keep working on getting these burgers done and sharing things with you. But what we are going to get into today is check this out right here. What's this you say? Well, most of you might recognize this. This is the floor shifter cutout. Um, I'm going to read. I guess need to redo this hole in the floor so that I can install basically the automatic shifter and all that, the boot that goes around it. So how do you cut a hole like this with a straight cutoff wheel? That's what I'm gonna show you here today. Well, let's get started here, dig into our little project of getting this done. We'll throw that right there, but look at this door. I think I wanna show you right quick. Now on this camera, I don't really show you all the detail, but that thing lines up fantastically. OER, AMD, totally different brands, but I'll tell you what, I think they're really getting their stuff together. Um, or maybe it's just how this thing came together. It got really fortunate, went well, using the measurement technique. Um, as you saw in the very beginning, if you guys watching, very little or no bracing. I built this car, just continuous measurement over and over and over again, and pulling things in tight. So this door lines up perfect here. This is the original rocker panel. I said perfect, sorry. Lines up very well, lines dead up on there. Nice even gap across the whole bottom of the door. Lines up good with a quarter panel. I really can't ask for a much better fitment. Um, the driver's side needs a little tweaking at the top. Just a little weird here at the top corner, but I'll take it. It's a little tight right here, but we're talking minimal modifications. So there's my little soapbox for replacement doors. I've never been happy with them before. I'm hoping when I put the fender on, I'm just as fortunate, but we'll find out. I just want to share that with you. This is just, wow, it kind of blows my mind that I wasn't sure. He said, I got brand new doors for you to try, John. Well, I'm glad he did. It's going to save me lots of time, and these look really great. So let's get into our project here today. What I want to do, I kept this old piece here as a sample for making a template. Um, I had one before. I gave it to my buddy Louie, not because I knew I'd end up getting another one. So now I've got one, and i probably hold on to this one. But it, pretty simple. Now, the center console, there's these two ribs here on the floor. Uh, on 67, they end up right about here in the middle of these two ribs. But on 68 and 69, these holes are actually in this rib here. So we're going to be using this as our template, line this up with that rib. There's my bolt hole, or hole for you got to drill in the floor to put the studs in for our bracket that supports the uh, center console. So that's what's going to go on there. So once I get that kind of located, I'll just basically trace out this oval-shaped hole here on the floor. I can go ahead and punch this hole here too. That's one of those little thread inserts get actually get stamped into the floor, kind of like a pop rivet. That holds your shifter. And these two holes back here, as you can see, those are the holes that were in the floor pan when I put that convertible brace underneath. So they lined right up right basically with where I needed to be. So that looks really nice. So I'll be able to use this hole and put those little thread inserts in these three holes. These three are for actually the shifter to mount to the floor pan. Uh, so I've got to get my marker here and get this drawn out. All right, this is as simple as, like I said, we've lined up our rib here. Just gonna make a little mark, make a little mark. And we're gonna trace this out. Now, 1969, it's a nice, clean, stamped hole. 1968, they'll use a torch to cut the hole. In 1967, it's more of a square hole with a reinforcement flange around it. So, can't keep that in mind. There's a little difference between all the years, but nice, clean holes we're gonna go with this one here. We'll go ahead and mark this hole. Now, the little smaller holes for the boot, I'll probably just wait till I actually install the shifter in the boot, and then I'll put those screws right through that. Because you can tell this has been moved because we got two sets of holes. So we're going to leave that be. So now we can expose what we need to get into. So we're going to pop a hole there, pop a hole here, pop a hole there, and we're going to cut that out. Now, you're asking yourself, how the heck do you cut a circular hole with a cutoff wheel? Well, that's what we're going to show you here today. Now, 
Your cutoff wheel or death wheel, whatever you call it. Normally come about this big around. Never gonna work. This is where you keep some of your partially worn out ones around. This is gonna be your helping little hand. What we're gonna end up doing literally is taking this cutoff wheel and standing it up on the side and basically letting it cut. I'm gonna follow our line like this and it'll actually cut through. Then we'll cut our straights. I'm gonna do the same thing here with that leading edge. Now, it gets a little tight into the dash, but it can be done and make a nice clean hole. It'll look just like it did here from the factory. Let me show you how this goes. Now we're going to call this lesson, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking because sometimes the best example is the best way to teach something, like learn by example, not what's been said, but what you've seen. So basically watch what I'm doing here and hopefully it makes sense. Change this to a swivel fitting. All right, check this out. I put one of these little swivels on the end that way I can clear it in my dash as I'm getting around here to the front and make our life a little more gooder here. Once you get it close, it should be scored the lowest way through, probably just kind of a little tap tap. Now this is gonna be a very sharp edge. You might have to file that so you don't have any parts that'll get you to cut, but that looks pretty good. Now that compressor stopped making all that noise, I'll show you what it, up close what this kind of looks like. You can kind of see that it makes for a nice oval shaped hole. Now you can control the radius, so it's gonna come back here with a little bit of file, clean up the edges. Just for an FYI or point of reference, here's a four inch cutoff wheel, and here's what I have there. Um, you can tell it's probably about halfway worn out. Can I get you an idea how much that's worn? So I keep my, I guess, like partially worn out cutoff wheels around. They come in handy for cases just like this. All right, so how do we do? Let's check this out here. We'll lay this back on top, and we'll do a side by side comparison. A little bit on the corner here, but doesn't look all that bad. Look at that, it almost lines up dead on. Now the edges have any sharp edges on it. They're filing and all that. So I gotta punch those holes, but I would say that's pretty daggum good. We're just using a cutoff wheel and a file. And this doesn't have to be perfect. It's under the carpets, under the floorboard. Um, I just think this is a better way than just making a hole and just punching it out and making a rectangular hole. It kind of looks a little closer to original. And it's tools you probably already have. That's the most important part. Not spending some money on some kind of, I don't know what you'd call it. But there's other ways to probably cut this out. It's just how I do it. Seems to work really nice. Got me a cool template. Now I'll go ahead and punch these holes out here. Got my step drill bit here. That's the best way to do it. And we'll end up putting those little thread inserts in which look like these right here. If you've ever seen these, I'll do this on a later video because I like to actually paint the floor first and then put these in. That's how the factory kind of did it. They were actually, these were installed after the floor is painted. So that's a later day project. I'll go ahead and punch the holes while I'm here. See a little TV magic there for you. Simple as that. The one over here comes back with media blast and paint everything. 
That falls right into those two holes here. We put these in and they're like, just like pop rivets basically. And they get clamped into place and I can mount everything in there. Hey, so there you have it. How to put a hole in the floorboard of your brand new floor pan. That's how I like to do it here. Looks super clean, comes out nice. On 68, I've actually taken a torch before and kind of duplicated what was done. Um, but this is actually an okay technique for 68, just the same. And like I said, 67 you could do it, but the hole's more of a square hole with a reinforcement flange on it. Um, but hey, whatever. This is kind of good information to share with you because you may have to cut other holes in your car body. And how do you cut around the hole the straight edge? Uh, now you see how it's done with a just a cut off wheel. No special tool required or spend any money. Probably a tool you probably already have, especially with those half worn out cut off wheels. And that makes it even better, save a little more money there too. So hopefully this tip helped you out. If you like what you see, please subscribe. If you really, really like what you see, share it with your friends. I'd like to see you seeing girl. We're almost at that 10,000 subscriber mark. Yay, right? My goal is 1,000 subscribers, and I was going to call it quits. Actually, originally, I just want to see if I could do it. But I've been having too much fun sharing this stuff here. You guys seem to like it, and I appreciate the feedback. I will continue to do, build these cars, share the videos and the stories with you, make it all happen here in a little two-car garage. And, of course, hopefully get this thing off to media blast. And if not, maybe jump back on the back and black high school bird. Get that body work done. Get that car painted, because that thing's a beast of a car. I'm really kind of... Looking forward to jamming gears with a 494 cubic inch Pontiac. Oh, what's that you say? If you haven't seen that, check out the older videos of me building this car. I'd like to get back to that. But anyway, enough rambling on. I'll definitely grab the camera and we'll see you guys next time.